Hey guys, Soul Closet here, back making another video. And today I'm going to be doing a setup and, uh, I don't know, general impressions review like impromptu thing for the Steam Link. If you haven't yet seen my unboxing video of it, you can check it out on my channel. I may or may not link it here or in the description. Um, but let's get started. So, inside the box, you should have found the Steam Link and the cables that come with it. I'm going to assume you've already taken it out of the box, because I did that in my other video. So here's the device itself. It's got the grippies on that side. It's got the I.O. there. So we're going to take the included power cable, which I have conveniently stashed right over here, and plug it into the wall. Stretch. And plug it in right there. Great, you can see the lights on the Ethernet port light up, which means it's powered. Good stuff, good stuff. And then we're going to take the included HDMI cable, which I've got right here, and plug it into the back. And then I'm going to take it up here. And you know what? I will plug it in back there, and I'll switch over to the video capture from the Steam Link in just a second. Alright, so I've gotten it set up with my game capture. The only issue I'm finding, and I don't know if this is a unique problem to me, but I'm going to mostly ignore it, is that uh, while feeding into my Elgato Game Capture HD device, um, the output from the game capture does not output anything. It doesn't go to my TV. Um, that's not how the Elgato is supposed to work, but I'm not sure if the Steam Link has any sort of recording protection um, of any kind. Either way, you can obviously tell that I'm recording it right now, and as long as we don't run into any problems during this, I'm just going to be looking at it with about a second of delay while I'm recording. Um, I don't plan to do any gameplay other than for the purposes of making sure it works, so this shouldn't be a problem in your use or mine. It's just that it's something I have to deal with uh, while recording for this video. So at this point, you can see on the screen that it wants you to plug in either the adapter for a Steam controller or another method of input. I'm going to be using an aftermarket Xbox 360 controller because those are fully compatible with the Steam Big Picture platform. So here it asks for your language. I'm going to choose English. Connects to your network. I believe I'm going to have to put in my Wi-Fi password. Yes. All right. I'm going to blur this part out in the video because, uh, yeah, I'm not showing you guys my Wi-Fi. <laughs> so let's put that in here. All right, so once you've connected it to your network, it's going to scan your network for computers running Steam. The uh, computer that it came up with is mine. There's no others in my house right now. So you'll select your computer that you want to use. It will download updates, I guess. All right, so it looks like the Steam Link has restarted to apply the updates. When you get yours, if you decide to get one, it will probably have to update as well. So I'm just leaving this in here to show you that that's part of the process of setting it up. All right, guys, so it's at this point that I realized that the Steam Link, after updating its uh, firmware, doesn't actually allow you to record, at least not with the recording hardware and software that I have. Um, that sucks, personally. That's my opinion. I know that this is a setup video, and kind of a review, so it's not just my opinion in this video, but this is the first point at which I'm going to say that kind of sucks. Um, I don't think it hinders the usage of the device for people who actually want one, but I'm just letting you know you can't record from the device. Now, obviously, if you have a computer that can record games next to the Steam Link, you can probably just play the games on that computer and record them there. Um, but there's got to be somebody out there who would have gotten some utility out of recording from the Steam Link itself. Um, I'm not one of those people, but, you know, 
it's unfortunately not supported with the hardware that I have. Your mileage may vary, try it out if this interests you. Um, but that's the first thing, is that the rest of this video is going to be shot on my phone from this angle, so I hope that it's not too bad. Anyway, uh, right here it lets you adjust the display using the left and right controls on whatever you're using. Uh, mine scales perfectly, so I'm going to say next. Alright, so at this point it allows you to pick a computer that you've selected or add another and set up all sorts of wonderful settings. So uh, you've got controller. Right now it's X input controller, which is just my 360 controller here. A normal actual 360 controller would work just the same. Um, I assume that it maps correctly. That's the stick. All right, well, that worked just fine. Uh, audio. It's got HDMI, Bluetooth audio. You can use it with Bluetooth speakers, so that's cool. It's got stereo and various surround things. As, um, it doesn't have mono, but I don't know who would be using this with mono because it's HDMI. Um, ambient. Ah, yes. I don't know if you could hear it, but the Steam Link was making a low humming noise um, that faded in and out. You could turn that off. I'm going to leave it on because I like it. Um, you can enable a microphone that's plugged in if you have one. Um, and I guess it would detect it here, though I'm not going to be plugging one in. So let's go back. Bluetooth. Yes, so I'm not sure what you could pair to this other than controllers, um, input devices of other kinds, and speakers. But we know that those will work. Um, I don't have any on hand to test, but, you know, it's Bluetooth. Bluetooth generally works when it works. Um, controller, we already checked that out. Display. Yes, CEC. You know, I'm not 100% sure. Ah, yes, no, I remember what CEC is. CEC is the protocol that HDMI devices use to transmit controller and other power signal um, signals to each other over HDMI without any extra overhead. Um, so if you wanted the Steam Link to turn on your TV, if it's supported, when the Steam Link is on, uh, which doesn't make any sense since the Steam Link doesn't have a power button. But if you wanted it to do that, you could do that. I'm sure it's well implemented. I don't have a TV that supports that, so I'm not going to try it out. You could set the resolution to 480p, 720p, uh, 720 at 25 hertz, 29.97 hertz, 50 hertz, 59.94, 60. So many options because it's American and European. I'm going to be leaving it at the auto detect, which is almost 60 hertz at 1080p. And you could change the scaling there as well, like you could during the setup. Language, it's language, fairly simple. Mouse, um, I don't have a mouse plugged in, but you can change the sensitivity here. Network, this allows you to connect to wireless networks or other uh, wired networks. Again, I'll be blurring this out here if you can see it. I'll decide that while I'm editing. Sleep. Ah, uh, yes, you can set it to sleep after a certain amount of inactivity so that if you walk away, it'll go to sleep and save power. That's nice. Nice to have. Streaming. All right. So here's an important thing. Uh, for Wi-Fi, you can choose between using 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, or both together. By default, it is a dual band device. It'll use both, although currently I only have it set up with my 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. If your Wi-Fi supports 5 gigahertz, which it should if you're going to use Wi-Fi for the Steam Link, you're gonna wanna put it on dual band and hook it up to both of your connections. Um, you can also go between fast for bad connections or worse connections, balanced, the default, or beautiful, which assumes that you're wired in through ethernet and have a great connection to show the best quality possible. System settings includes uh, switching to the beta firmware, which I assume has different features, but I'm not going to be doing that in this video. Checking for more updates, debugging, and factory reset. So stuff we don't need to mess with. Virtual here lets you see what USB devices are plugged in. So it looks like what this is doing is virtual here is a it's a, a third party product. So what I what I believe this does is it allows you to use this product, this called uh, this software called Virtual Here, to send your USB devices, if they're not as simple as a controller, mouse, or keyboard, 
to your computer directly with low delay as part of the streaming of your game so that you can use your intricate inputs for Farm Simulator or whatever you like to play. Um, it says racing wheels and joysticks, things with extra buttons. You could set that up on your computer if you own that software. So, we've got Soul PC hooked up. It says offline. And it's frozen. Okay. That's... All right. Seems to have disconnected from my network. I'll get this set up in just a second. All right. So, under start playing here. And it's frozen again. I'm really not sure what's happening. There we go. That was an interesting bug. All right, Soul PC. So you'll see that it asks, it puts up a pin on the screen. This is a one-time connection, and you just go to your Steam-enabled computer and type it in. So I'm going to do that right now. The box will show up from the Steam client. You have to have the Steam client open when you do this on the computer. Driver installation? Audio driver? Oh, buddy. Okay. So I'm going to click install. It says it might reboot my computer. If it does, um, then I'll just come back to you when it does. Um, but we'll see what it does. I'll, uh, I'll be back. All right. So right now, this Steam Big Picture instance is running from my computer. Um, the Steam box, not box, the Steam instance on my computer minimized itself on the computer screen, which you can't see right now, I don't. Think maybe you can. Either way, um, Steam minimized itself, and now it's running entirely on the Steam link. So I, you can see I can open my library. Um, and just to see how it works, let's open up something. Let's open up... Hmm, do I have it installed? What do I have installed? Okay, I have Rivals of Ether installed. So let's open up Rivals of Ether and uh, see what happens. I've never done this before. As you can see, I just did the setup, but let's give it a try. I've also never played Rivals of Ether with this controller, but okay, so the game seems to have immediately started up and scaled to the correct uh, size of the screen. Now, the problem with this game is that it actually runs in a very small window on the desktop until you make it bigger. So I'm wondering if it's going to compress the resolution of the game as it streams to the Steam link um, until I click something in the options. But it doesn't look bad. Excuse me for being in front of the camera, but I'm going to uh, mute my TV while this is playing just because, uh, you know. All right, so I can't notice any input delay. This game's very technical. This is, if you don't know, Rivals of Ether is a Smash Bros. clone of sorts. Um, and it would be very noticeable while playing if there is any input lag. So this is going to be the perfect opportunity for me to uh, check that out. So let's change my name. Uh, like I said, I'm not too experienced or experienced at all with this controller in this game. Um, and it does feel a little janky, but I believe that's just the game itself and not anything to do with the Steam Link. Um, so let's... There's one thing that I'm noticing while setting this up. Um, you probably can't see the little stick moving around there, but it's actually opposite of what I'm inputting on the right stick. So when I do upright, it goes down left. It's completely messed up. It's also tilted by about 90 degrees. Yeah, it's actually just, it's inverted and tilted 90 degrees. The only place, or no, 45 degrees? I'm not entirely sure. The only place where the, uh, stick in real life lines up with the in-game interpretation is when you hold down and to the right. Um, I don't know if that's a problem with Rivals of Ether, but um, yeah, it's uh, very clearly noticeable by the fact that I can't
can't use the stick for any moves accurately. It's not going the way that I want it to. Um, I don't know if that's a problem with Rivals of Ether, as I said, because I've only ever used a GameCube controller with this game. Um, however, the actual inputs that I know how to do are going through just fine. Um, what I'm going to try to do is I'm just going to not use my second stick, and I'm going to play a little match against a CPU here. Um, okay, that's fine. I don't really care. And let's just see how it goes. So right off the bat, you might have seen a little bit of stutter there. Um, nothing too big, but, you know, anything counts. When you're playing a game that's competitive, which they don't necessarily recommend doing on the Steam Link, um, you wouldn't want to play CSGO, Player Unknowns, stuff like that on it necessarily if you were looking to be competitive in those games. Um, but for being on a Wi-Fi connection and not a wired Ethernet connection to the Steam Link itself, this is completely playable. Now, I could easily see, you know, seasoned Smash Bros. veterans and other people like that who can very clearly recognize, excuse me, ah, recognize delay on an input or a, uh, a display. I can see them being a little bit annoyed with a very slight delay here. However, you have to remember, I am using Wi-Fi. And there are other people using the Wi-Fi. My phone is using the Wi-Fi. So given that I'm not the only person on my network, and I'm not wired in on both ends, and it isn't a, you know, perfect thing in the first place, this is very impressive. Um, now, Rivals of Ether does not take very much of my computer's resources to run. So I can imagine that if your game was lagging, you would have more problem with it not streaming correctly to your Steam Link um, as a result of the computer taking longer to render the frames before it sends them off to the device. However, um, as far as a test of, you know, raw performance where it counts, this is really impressing me. Um, this is definitely a little bit better than I expected, um, even for my relatively good internal network connection. Um, it's functioning correctly other than the aforementioned stick issue, which I believe is just a problem with this particular game and shouldn't affect your gameplay in games that are built for a controller like this. Um, and I really can't see any reason you wouldn't want to use this for casual gaming if it helps your setup. So uh, with that said, I'm not going to finish this match. Let's just uh, hop back out and give a uh, final overview. Uh, final thoughts, I guess, uh, for this video. The Steam Link seems like a perfectly functional device. Um, for the asking price, I would not have gotten one because I don't actually need to use it. Um, but f if you're looking to get one for its intended purpose, to stream your games to another part of your house on a good, fast internet connection, um, it's pretty great, honestly. Um, I mean, as you just saw, I only ran into an issue related to the game I was playing, and not at all related to the Steam Link's functionality. Um, and because enough people have this thing, I'm sure that with a little bit of Googling and asking things on r slash Steam link, which I believe it's r slash steam underscore link, but um, either way, the Steam link subreddit, um, you could probably get just about anything on Steam working that functions as a normal game. So yeah, um, for the dollar I paid for it, it's a great piece of hardware. I don't know if I'll ever be using it for more than, you know, one little bit at a time, but you know, it functions well. It plays my games, and that's all I need from it. Uh, so, let me know in the comments if you are getting a Steam Link, or if you already have one, and what your experiences might be. Um, if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like if you would like to do so. Uh, if you don't like this video, you can leave a dislike, and let me know in the comments what I could have done better. I wish I could have recorded all of the screen uh, footage for this video with my game capture, but like I said, it wouldn't let me. Um, it said invalid format. So I have a feeling it's either too new of a version of HDMI or it is um, protected. Uh, but I don't have the equipment to test that anyway. So yeah, um, that's all for this setup and review video for me. Um, I'll see you guys next time. So close it out. Bye.